One of the biggest topics this offseason has been running back contracts. Multiple top end running backs were up for a big payday going into the offseason, but none of them received one. People have been saying for years that this is a passing league and the running back position isn't anywhere near as important as it was in the past. While passing has increased over the years and having a top tier quarterback is the most important thing for a successful team, the contracts that these top tier running backs receive for their production compared to what wide receivers receive for theirs is not even close to similar. Let's take a deeper look. Saquon Barkley just received an $11 million contract. He's currently the 6th highest paid running back in the league. It's no surprise that an elite player like Saquon is the 6th highest paid player in his position, but let's take a look at the 6th highest paid wide receiver. DK Metcalf has a contract for $24 million a year, over two times the amount of Saquon's contract. You have to go all the way down to the 25th highest paid receiver to find someone who's getting paid the same amount as Barkley. Both Alan Lazard and Jacoby Myers are getting paid $11 million a year. Barkley, Lazard, and Myers all signed their contracts this offseason. Last season, Lazard had 788 receiving yards and Myers had 804 receiving yards, a combined 1,592 yards with these players. Saquon on his own had 1,700 scrimmage yards. Saquon had more yards than two players combined and now both those players making the same amount of money as him. How does that make sense? There are reports that Barkley had apparently asked for $16 million a year. He came out and said those weren't true, but for the sake of the video, let's just say he did ask for $16 million a year. $16 million per year would make Saquon the 18th highest paid receiver in the league. He'd be right above Hunter Renfro, who had 1,038 receiving yards the year he signed his contract, and he'd be making $1 million more than Odell Beckham Jr. OBJ hasn't played football in over a year. The last time he was on the field, he got a knee injury in the Super Bowl and had to leave the game. OBJ doesn't play football for a year and signs for $15 million, while Saquon Barkley, one of the best running backs in the league, is now making $4 million less than him. OBJ would be the second highest paid running back in the league with that contract. If that's not a clear sign that wide receivers are making way too much money in comparison to running backs, I don't know what is. I'm sure many of you have seen the stats with the teams who have won the Super Bowl over the past few years not paying big money to their number one running back. This fact is the biggest argument that running backs don't deserve a big payday. Of the 20 highest paid running backs in the league, zero have a Super Bowl win and only three have actually made it to the big game. Of the top 20 highest paid receivers in the league, seven of them have played in a Super Bowl and five of them have won the game. If there's a direct correlation between teams not paying running backs and winning the Super Bowl and teams that have paid running backs not winning it, how much of an impact does my argument of a player like Saquon getting a big contract really even have? The goal is to win it all, and recent history shows that paying a running back big money doesn't lead to winning the big game. Here's why that argument is meaningless. These teams that have won the Super Bowl didn't win because they weren't paying their running backs. They won because they had elite quarterbacks leading the way. Brady, Mahomes, Stafford, and Peyton Manning have all been in the last 10 Super Bowls, and they've won 8 of them. These teams weren't paying their running backs big money because the large focal point of the offense was the elite quarterback play. The teams that have the highest paid running backs in the league don't have elite level quarterbacks that these Super Bowl winning teams had. The running back play is necessary for them to win games. If the Giants decide to not pay Barkley, Daniel Jones isn't suddenly going to become a top 5 quarterback in the league. It's the same thing with the Raiders and Josh Jacobs. All quarterbacks and wide receiver contracts are being inflated ridiculously because of the success of these few elite quarterbacks while running backs are being punished for it. Hey, you made it all the way to the end. Didn't think anyone would come this far. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and comment your thoughts down below. Thanks.